Hello everybody, welcome to a new episode of what we call Jan's Opening Clinic. For no good reason, really. The format of this show is that you, the dear Chess24 Premium users, ask me opening, chess opening I should say, chess opening related questions in a news article which we publish like a day before and I do my best to answer them for like the first 5-10 minutes, then I get tired or annoyed at something and it becomes an unpleasant sight. But in the first 5-10 minutes it's normally a highly educational show for everyone involved. I'll state directly that I won't be able to answer all the questions I received. It's way over 100. This is a two-hour show. However, I'll do my very best to find the right mix between answering as many questions as I can and giving enough detail. So I should probably stop mumbling on and get to the first question already. Mm. But how do I get there? I haven't really thought this <laughs> through at all. I'm just sitting here. I didn't even bring a shirt today. This is one of the more serious shows I'm doing. So we're all gonna have to focus. We will all have to focus and just sit through it. Or I recommend not watching this live. Just wait till it becomes available on demand. Is that how you call it? On demand. And then you can scroll past all the questions you don't care about, which probably will be most. Anyway, question number one. Does this work? Yeah, here we go. The Dark Horde, Jan. What is the state of affairs in the Tartakova variation of the QGD, which is short for Queen's Gambit Declined? It's never being played anymore. At least not know, not know the highest level, not at the highest level. Is, are there any concrete reasons for that or is it just a fashion thing? Cheers and have a great new year. Thank you so much. Mm, first of all, I'm not sure what the Tartakova variation is, but I do have a guess. Normally it's easier for me if you just give the move order. Secondly, I do believe that I've answered the exact same question in one of the previous clinics. That's not criticism, that's just showing that I have fantastic memory. I thought it was even worded pretty much the same way. So my guess as for what the Tartakova is, it's this line with bishop b7, bishop g5, then castles h6, b6. And to answer the question, no, there's nothing wrong with it, to the best of my knowledge. I believe you just don't get to that position that often anymore. Bishop e7 has a lot of competition from moves like bishop b4, c6, c5, dc4, knight bd7. And one reason that bishop e7 is a little out of fashion, well, that's a bit strong, is that white players have shifted towards bishop f4 instead of bishop g5. And then in the rare cases where they do go bishop g5, after castles e3, h6, bishop h4, knight e4 has established itself as a reasonably clear equalizer, as far as I know. And therefore, yeah, you don't get to see as many b6 games as maybe we used to see in the 80s when everybody played bishop g5. And a lot of people played this h6, b6. Just wise, I'm not aware of anything being wrong with it. I think they still play the same lines. Stuff like this. And now they've experimented a bit with castles or still go for the old b4. But black is doing alright, but at least at the highest level. Bishop g5 is not so popular anymore. And once this position occurs, they tend to go knight e4. Therefore, I think if it's part of your repertoire, you can safely keep playing it. There's not a problem with it. Mm, I hope that's what I answered last time. I didn't remember the question, but I have no idea what my answer was. <laughs> Who is next? Mr. Rest in Pieces. I believe that is the correct pronunciation. Rest in Pieces is asking, Hi Jan, thank you for all the great work you and Chess24 do. Thank you. I've become a better player since finding this site. In the Queen's Gambit Exchange 6 Queen C2. I've been trying an idea for black to try and win the bishop pair. Would like to know what you think about 8, knight of 8. And we get some moves. Mm, black plays knight of 8 with the idea to play knight g6. Next, after virtually any move, then h6, try to win the bishop pair. Is knight of 8 a serious idea? Let me bring up my little chessboard. 
and we shall find out. This is still the position from the last question. We will have to get used to this. It always takes me a while to switch between my many windows here and then to get to the position in question. But I shall do my very best. So how do we get here? C6, let's say this, 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 bishop d3 and knight f8. That's a serious line, especially if white has already committed to queen c2. But I believe your plan of going for the two bishops will be hard to implement with knight g6 and h6. Normally you won't get this done if I, let's say, go knight f3. Here knight g6, I don't really see the point if I, whatever, let's say, I play h3. You can't really win the bishop pair by going h6 because it always takes, and bishop takes g6. So this idea of knight g6, h6 doesn't quite work, but you can play an idea that is a fairly typical knight e6, g6, and then try to go knight g7, bishop f5. We'll see something very similar later on. You normally get a position like this. I believe this is pretty much exactly the position from an earlier, que from a later question, where white is slightly better, but black is solid enough to make a draw, and it's a matter of taste. If this bothers you enough not to play with black, or if you think, okay, I can draw this, this is fine objectively. Therefore, yeah, it's playable. It's not my cup of tea from the black side of the board. Let's find another question. Hope that rest in pieces was satisfied with that answer. Brother. Hi Jan, by the way, nice job you have done on this Nimzo Indian video series. Thank you, sir. My question is, what do you think of my game, Nimzo Indian, in which I was black, some ideas that I demonstrated during the game, and what do you think of my opponent move orders? My opponent played 4a3, you've covered that in your video series, and after exchange that occurred, takes he wasn't familiar with 5 knight e4. Stop f3 e4. By the way, you did not mention that line in your video series. Very true, I did not. I do not think that that's such a good move. And so let me show why very briefly. After I very briefly get back to the position you mentioned d4, knight f6, c4, e6. No, knight c3, bishop b4, a3. I was very surprised. There seems to be a lot of interest in a3, which to my mind is a very suspect move. You just waste the tempo um, in order to force this exchange. I'm not a big believer, and as far as I know, it's not popular at all either, but there were a lot of questions, so maybe I'm wrong. Anyway, knight e4. The point is to get in a quick f5 to make it harder for white to expand on the center. That part I understand, but we're not really attacking the pawn on c3. Therefore, I believe the best white move is knight to h3. Problem is, if you go f3, then queen h4 check is a bit of a nuisance. So you go knight h3, preparing f3, then queen h4, g3. Black can't take on c3 because of queen c2, and the knight is trapped. And if you go f5, just f3, knight to f6, and here white can push e4 immediately. Fe, Fe, if knight takes e4, queen g4, ask some questions. Therefore, yeah, I think this line is giving white a bit more than he deserves, and you don't really succeed in stopping white from building up a big center. The position is not so bad for black, having said all these things. If you go d6, followed by knight c6, it's kind of playable, but I'm not a big, big fan. Still, it's not horrible, and congratulations on winning this very nice game where you surprised your opponent. Hmm, let's find another question. Peta Pato Pato is asking, was Jan in the Carlsons group or not? Yes, Jan was in the Carlsons group. Sai Ben, hi Jan. I would like to hear your opinion about d4, d5, c4, bishop f5, exclamation mark. Best Ben. Adding the exclamation mark, probably hinting at the fact that he quite likes to move two bishop f5. Normally, no, I'll just tell you whatever I think, but normally it's not a great idea to play sidelines with the black pieces on move two, is my honest opinion. And I also do have a chess engine. If we look at this little bar, even here, it's gonna start jumping a bit. 
because after c takes d5 in this move order, I believe this is a pretty bad line for black. Bishop takes b1 tends to be the idea, and now both queen a4 check or rook takes b1 lead to a very significant white advantage. The computers don't even bother after queen takes d5 to defend this pawn. They say, whatever, you can take this pawn, have it, and enjoy, because they say white is so much ahead in development, has the two bishops, has control of the center, that most good engines will already give you a plus one advantage here for white. Well, if you don't take the pawn, white just keeps developing, and black is seriously, seriously worse. So, I'm not a big fan of that line. Queen a4 check also leads to a serious white advantage. And um, yeah, that's what I think. Sorry, Saiban. Do we have other questions? And I do know the answer to this. Yes, we do. We have Mr. Summerbird, who says, Hi Jan, thanks for the very instructive Nimzo series. Thank you, highly recommendable. I agree, it's, it's great stuff. <laughs> As you pointed out in a video clip of the series, you first had the idea of covering the Queen's Gambit declined. That is true, and rejected this project, mainly because of the exchange variation and the game Carlsen Kramnik Norway Chess 2016. Also true, I would like to encourage you to do a video series about the Queen's Gambit declined. Nah, I'm, I made my choice. I made my bet, and now I have to sleep in it. And frankly, I'm quite happy I chose the Nimzo, because honestly, I always felt that this Queen's Gambit declined, I was hoping it would work, but it was sort of a shortcut. And it's not really my approach to take shortcuts. And anyway, and this leads to my question. Why not avoid the main line in the exchange by going d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight c3, d5, cd, knight d5, e4, knight c3, b, c, c5. There are a lot of games played on a high level, and the black side seems to be doing okay. What do you think? Thanks. That line is called the semi tarash and I do agree that it's a very playable line. I'm sure I've dabbled with it myself in the past. However, yeah, I'm not big enough of a fan to do a video series about it for reasons both both objective, or I believe, and not mainly subjective. First of all, then the move order you gave here after cd, knight d5, e4, knight c3, bc, c5. Why does some extra options? You don't have to go knight f3 here, which leads to the main line after cd, cd, bishop b4, check, bishop d2, takes, takes, castles. But even this, these positions, I've analyzed this quite a bit. I'm not that happy. I mean, they're playable. And if you have Vladimir Kramnik and finished looking at all the lines, found a draw everywhere, you can do this. But even Kramnik, he actually lose the occasional game to the Mamed Yarovs and Aronians of the world. I believe that after rook c1 and bishop c4, black has a fairly thankless task of trying to defend this position against the white space advantage, even though it's absolutely doable, and as I said, it's a playable line. But yeah, I'm not a tremendous fan of that, and this move order also gives white other options, like rook b1 is a pretty serious move here keeping more pieces on the board, and a3 is a pretty serious move. So yeah, I'm not that sold on it. And also for repertoire reasons, I had already done my video series on the Vienna, the DC4 line. Well, if you want to play the semi tarash by all means, do it in the move order I just showed you, but then you also want to go c5 here, c takes d, knight takes d5, which most likely will transpose to the lines we've just seen after e4, knight takes c3. Therefore, yeah, it wasn't an option for me really, both for repertoire consistency and for chess reasons, because I don't, yeah, I don't really enjoy it, and it doesn't seem to lead to, I don't know what the word is, it doesn't seem to have enough upside, but it is a fully playable opening, and I do believe that it will be around. Anything Vladimir Kramnik plays more than once is normally a good opening. That's my rule of thumb, but I hope I could explain why I'm not a Great fan of it. Hmm. Mr. Meteorite is not a premium member, so I have to ignore him, as painful as it is. Jerexon is saying, Hi Jan, could you really briefly explain the ideas plans in the open Spanish for black? What do you think about it? Thanks for your great work on Chess24. These are normally the questions I struggle with the most. Can you briefly explain the ideas behind major chess openings? Because I uh, I don't really think that much in ideas. I think more in moves and lines and so on. So 
the more concrete your question, the better. But this might also be a shortcoming of mine, so I'll just very briefly put the open Spanish on the board, which is an opening that has been gaining steam popularity all through 2016. You grab the pawn, but your intention is not really to keep the pawn. The main line here is to go play d4 for white, b5, bishop b3, black is forced to return the pawn, e takes d4 leads to trouble. So what you do instead is you go d5, d takes e, bishop e6, and you reach a very unique structure with this active knight on e4, and these very, yes, seldomly seen pawns, black pawn on d5, white pawn on e5. The nature of the play is very hard for me to describe. First of all, because I struggle with ideas or wording ideas and plans in general. Black wants to develop bishop e7 castle, and then according to the situation, sometimes he wants to grab the bishop, sometimes in a perfect world he wants to mobilize all his pawns, sometimes he wants to go f6, exchange the e5 pawn, sometimes he wants to go bishop g4, put pressure on it, blah blah blah. The main line used to be knight bd2 here. There are some other options that have been gaining a bit of momentum, like queen e2 and c3 in this position. Because in the main line, after knight b2, knight c5, c3, black players have successfully started to play the move bishop to e7. They used to play d4 here, but suffered a bit. But in these lines, after bishop e7, bishop c2, and now d4, the theory discussions are still ongoing, but so far black has been holding his own, therefore white has started to experiment with some other lines. So this is a modern tabia, I believe that's the word, where the discussion is around is this pawn a weakness or an asset and is this playable for black on a broader scheme and so for now the answer seems to be yes it's kind of playable a lot of top players have defended this position with black successfully i'm sure that wasn't really the answer you were hoping for with more arrows and plans and ideas shown but as i said i struggle with those assignments galactic big post by galactic hi jan I've watched your entire Nimzo series. I think it's amazing. And since I love your chess style, it appeals particularly to me. Thank you so much. High praise. With black, I answered to one knight f3 with one d5 in order to avoid getting move ordered into, a fav unf into an unfavorable version of the Nimzo or Bogo. So if your repertoire is the Nimzo or Bogo, you go knight f3 d5. I'm not sure that makes sense to me, but I'll continue reading. Knight f3, knight f6, c4, e6. Looks like a much more natural choice. But then, yeah, knight c3, and I understand. You could have some theory problems normally. Nimzo Bogu players have to add, like, the headshock or something to the repertoire. Anyway, your point is after d5, d4, you want to play bishop f5, then c4, e6, knight c3, and I'm not sure what to play. And that's a less trashy version of these bishop f5 lines than the one we had in a previous question with d4, d5, c4, bishop f5, but I still don't fully trust it. I'm aware some dudes experiment with that, normally more in blitz or rapid chess, but yeah, it still feels like black should not be allowed to take all these liberties and put the bishop here when all white is done is fight for the center. So I'll get back to the question a minute. They used to play c6 here, but I believe it's established that white is better in this line, right? Therefore, they've started playing a bit of knight to f6, but I don't trust this either. I believe in the question you referenced some game, Swidler, Aronian Swidler, where white was better. I also think after knight h4 here, white is seriously better just going after this bishop not sure why no one plays that and then you mentioned the move knight c6 but that does look very very goofy indeed i yeah i don't like this one bit even c d e d bishop f4 just seems to lead to a stable advantage so i'm not a fan of two bishop f5 sorry i would guess first of all of course come around to the dark side and give up the bogo and play one of these beautiful lines instead. Or yeah, else after knight f3, it's probably a decent idea to build a repertoire around something like this, just to avoid 
getting move ordered out of these things. Because if people see your rapid draw as a Nimzo or Bogo, but after knight f3 you go d5, d4, bishop f5, guess what? I will play against you every game. Like, people will catch on to such things. But I could be wrong. However, I don't have a high opinion on, yeah, on either of the lines you mentioned. So, sorry, Galactic. Scorpius is saying, Hi Jan, I've been struggling a bit against the two knight system in the Karakan. Yeah, I've recommended that two knight system many a time for white. I think it's an underrated system. The old main line with three bishop g4 was never satisfactory for me. And recently I've noticed that a couple of strong players, Ding Arnott, have played knight f6. Do you think this is a playable move? And if not, what would you recommend instead? I do think it's a playable move. I have to admit I'm not extremely up to date. I also have noticed that especially Vichy had an interesting game recently. And normally whatever Anna plays you can safely copy. So yeah, bishop g4, h3. I agree that after bishop f3 why is a bit better. Bishop h5 is a move that I always thought was playable. It depends on some very sharp lines like this. Bishop b4, and I'm not sure if black can get away with this, but this could be an area to do some research. And um, knight f6, e5, knight e4, I think it's playable. The main line is this weird move, knight e2, avoiding the exchange. After queen b6, d4, e6, thing gets even weirder. Things get even weirder. White goes knight fg1, threatening f3. You get this very, very strange position. I'll just put it on the board because I'm not sure I can explain any of the moves leading up to here. f4, and here they used to play knight f7, but Vichy played knight to e4 instead. Knight g3, threatening a check here, but he just ignored it by playing bishop d7. And I have to admit, I haven't spent great amounts of time checking this position, but I trust Vichy Anand's opening preparation so much that normally when he does something, you can safely copy it, switch your computer on and yeah, just follow Mr. Vichy. I'm sure it's an interesting idea and I think this is the current epicenter of discussions in this line. Sometimes instead of knight e2, they try and move like bishop e2 as well. But that looks playable for black. So, long story short, yeah, I do think that 3 knight f6 is a playable move and the hottest currency in that line at the moment. Speaking of hottest currency, drink some more out of my... Lovely chest 24 mug. Mm. Cosmo SG is saying, Hi Jan, will you cover Benko Gambit in your black repertoire against 1d4 or is it too unsound for GM level? Neither. I have zero intentions to cover it, but I'm not sure the discussion is over that it's too unsound at GM level. I wouldn't say that's the case. Like I normally avoid it with either color. Like after d4, knight f6, c4, c5. I play a lot of knight f3 or one knight f3. But no, I'm not sure it's bad. It occasionally pops up. It's been a bit of a, in a bit of a crisis after b a6. But I think we have some questions about this later. There's been a bit of a comeback for black by not taking on a6 so early but by going for something like this. I'm not sure if it's unsound but it's certainly not my cup of tea. If I'm gonna be a pawn down after three moves at least I want some attack for it. Actually I don't think there's a single line in my repertoire where I will be a pawn down after three moves so I don't want to add this but that's more of a preference than a judgment thing. So no I have zero intentions to add it but I'm not sure if it's unsound. Who else is with us on this lovely, I have no idea what day it is, Tuesday afternoon? It's Tuesday, right? We got sort of screwed with the holidays this year because December 24th was on a Saturday and then New Year's Eve was on a Saturday. How are you going to get any holidays out of this? Ninja Kiwi 17 is asking, Hi Jan, what do you think about 1G3H5? Is it playable or just rubbish? Long story short, just rubbish. Um, sounds like a movie you would play in Bullet, but I'm not sure what the point is really. 
So against the move one g3 that not a lot of people play. You wanna go h5. Yeah, I don't know. And after knight f3, is the idea h4 or what? What is the point? Because yeah, these things. That this looks like an excellent bullet weapon, but I'm fairly sure the white is close to winning here. Something like this. So I do not think that's a good idea. And if not h4, I'm really not certain what the intention of h5 was. So yeah, I don't think that's a great move. But I have a feeling you knew that already. Awake or Avake, you never know. Says, hi Jan and happy new year. I have a question about the Grievous variation in the Sicilian. Hmm, not my area of expertise, but we'll get there. e4, c5, knight f3, knight c6, d4, cd, knight d4, queen b6. And you already gave question mark, exclamation mark. So you think it's bad. Anyway, I quite like that variation and think about to play it in OTB games. It's not a mainland Sicilian and it seems to lead most times into equal positions with play for both sides. Not sure about the equal part, but yeah, it's certainly a line you can play if you want to mix it. But there is one or maybe more problem where I don't, where I'm not sure if this variation is correct enough to play. Okay, yeah, that's sounds like a problem. As far as I know, is the most critical variation the following line e4 c5 knight f3 knight c6 d4 cd knight d4 queen b6 question mark exclamation mark knight b3 knight f6 knight c3 e6 queen e2 bishop b4 bishop b2 i think he means bishop d2 in baramid's a knight h a5 yeah i've seen that game mm, i had the impression that the plan by black with a5 and e5 is the best he has in this line now my question so, ah, so all of this was a statement. Is there a line for black which nearly reaches equality or should I look for another variation like the Kuprychik variation? Um, e4, c5, knight f3, d6, d4, cd, knight d4, knight f6, knight c3, bishop d7. I'm still not 100% sure what the question is. I'm gonna assume that you're asking if the line you gave is equal in this game bar meets uh, knight h. I have to admit I'm not a specialist but I did turn on my computer. The computer says that the position was not equal but that bar meets, uh, was better outside of the opening if I find it which is not a given. e4 c5. Mm. First of all nowadays bishop b5 is as popular as d4, right? But okay, anyway. Queen b6, knight b3, knight f6, knight c3, e6. Yeah, I'm not an expert here. Like, oh, I'm sure there's normal lines as well, right? <clears throat> Stuff like this. f4, queen f3, but then you probably get the double-edged kind of play that you've been looking for. So queen e2, I've seen this move around. Bishop b4, bishop d2. You're saying this a5. This is what knight is did, right? Mike Reader says in this position after short castles, white should go g4 and he claims an advantage for white. So yeah, that's pretty much all I can contribute. Else, yeah, I'm not really sure what you're looking for. My normal advice is play main lines, don't switch around between sidelines like the Grievous variation or should I switch to the, uh, I've never heard these names, but the Kuprychik variation. I c3 bishop d7. Why not a6 instead of bishop d7? That's a more flexible move. It's the so-called Nidor variation. And you might have a friend for life instead of having to switch around. However, both these lines are probably decent surprise weapons if you wanna, or from where I stand, if you wanna play for a win and you wanna get your opponent out of book early, then I'm sure that's doable. But yeah, the computer says that black was not fully equal in that bar meets a knightage game. And again, it's probably not the intention of these lines to be fully equal. It's to get a sharp game and you succeed with that. I don't know, I, I don't get the question. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I hope I could help you a little bit. Um, let's see what's next. It's Schmuliki. 
He's saying, Jan, what do you think about e4, e6, d4, d5, knight c3, bishop b4, queen d3? I think that's probably not the best line ever invented, but I did notice that Hu Yifan played it recently in, I think, a rapid or blitz game against Vladimir Kramnik. Didn't do all that well, though. She went on to lose that game. And yeah, it looks like, looks like a very strange move. Mm, after all, we've learned about bringing out the queen early and all these things. Knight e7 seems like a very, very reasonable move, and I'm not sure what White's intention is. If a3 takes, takes c5, black seems to be better already. D takes e, queen e4, knight f6, queen h4. She just has b6. Also seems very fine for black, so yeah, I don't think queen d3 is the refutation of the French that you've been looking for. <laughs> Mr. Van Karl saying, Hi Jan, nice job on chess 24. Your series have helped me a lot for my understanding in chess opening. Thank you, Van Karl. I decided to adopt your recommendations for playing with black against d4. I'm playing against d4, c4, knight c3, the Nimzo Indian, and against d4, c4, knight f3, the Vienna or Semislav. Yeah, that's similar to what I'm doing. But I have problems against the London and Colis systems. This seems to be a big, big topic. I've, I know there's many more questions coming up like that. I play d4, knight f6, knight f3, d5, bishop f4, e6, e3, c5, c3, knight c6, bishop d3, queen b6, bishop e7, castles. That seem to me very schematic and easy to play with white because of the attack in the king side. And black doesn't have very dynamic, similar happen in the Colis system. My opponents always sacrifice a bishop on h7 and I get mated in a few moves. That sounds like bad news indeed. For you, what is the most, the best dynamic setup against these systems? Thanks a lot. P.S. Sorry for my English. No worries, I get everything. And yeah, this seems to be a very common worry these days. <coughs> I haven't really. Mm. Thought about it that much to be honest, but of course the London system is on the rise, especially the London. Like it's even it's even some of the goofier systems. And um, my first comment is, I believe you gave the move e6 here, which is a playable move, but especially since you haven't played e6 here yet, I would always start with c5, e3, knight c6, especially in this move order, where if white goes c3. Here it's fairly established that black is fine after queen b6, sorry. And if queen b3, then c4. And therefore the, whatever, the modern London is to play without knight, of, uh, knight f3 and to play bishop f4 immediately. I think we have some more questions about that later. But here I'm also a friend of playing d5, c5, c3, knight c6, knight d2. And... I always like to try to bring this bishop out, be it bishop f5 or cd, ed, bishop f5. I believe both of those are playable lines. The current trend at the highest level is surprisingly to me to play e6, knight gf3, bishop d6 here. Carlsen had some success with bishop g3. We'll get to that later. But yeah, I would normally not play e6 voluntarily unless I was forced to do so. And yeah, the moves you mentioned, they didn't really seem to fit together so well. It's bishop e7, queen b6. I'm not sure they didn't really seem to match. So yeah, my first advice would be if you're, you don't have to play e6 for repertory reasons so early, try to bring this bishop out here or after c, d, e, d, bishop f5 and see how things go for you. Hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna have to, because I've received this question many times in this opening clinic and also in other places, if I will do a fourth part of my opening series against 1d4, covering the London and the Tropovsky and all this exciting stuff. I certainly will. I don't know when. You guys know I'm slow and I always get, get distracted very easily, but it is on the to-do list. I'm well aware those are legal lines after d4 and f6, so they will be covered as part of this project. Let's move on to another question by Strand Tom T. Hmm. 
In a previous opening clinic, you recommended dc4 rather than bishop f5 for black in the diagram position. I did, very possible. Following the game Nakamura Anand 2015. However, in the position after knight f3, d5, g3, knight f6, bishop g2, c6, c4, dc, castles b5, a4, bishop b7, b3, b4, White can deviate from that game with 895, which is suggested in Christoph Zielecki's series on the English opening here on Chess24. Does this move alter your recommendations for black in this opening? I.e. do you think that this line still is better to play for black than for bishop f5? When I believe cd followed by queen b3 is one critical line. Hmm, sounds like you're a much bigger expert on any of these issues than me, Strandtom. So I'm not sure I can help you all that much. But let's um, try to bring it up. No, sorry, how do we get there? Mm, one second. Is it here? Maybe it's here. Yeah, this line, surprisingly, keeps showing up even at the highest level. Aronia won a nice game against Carlson when Carlson recently played g6 here, not feeling like entering a theoretical discussion. I still believe that dc4 is the most critical and principled move. Well, bishop f5 and bishop g4 are both solid choices, but you have to be ready to be slightly worse. I can't remember what I said, as usual, in my previous thingy. Here, after b3, b4, I thought black was fine. I'm not sure I haven't looked at this knight e5 here. Can't I just take... Anyway, I should probably look for more than 8 seconds, but the computer normally insists on something like d3 takes knight e5, which is quite tricky to handle for weird reasons. So this b5, yeah, it's a bit double-edged. There's other lines, like bishop e6 and the main line, knight bd7, which I would have guessed I recommended last time around. I can't remember a thing. However, white does have decent chances to get a long-term long -term play here, so I will have to admit that not all problems are solved. Queen c2 is what they tend to do here. In these lines of tonight b6, white has been doing well recently. So maybe it's time for black to eat some humble pie, play and give the pawn back, play something like this, which looks close to equal to me. But yeah, it's surprisingly a line with a lot of staying power, because to me it always looked a little weird to fear and cat to your bishop against this d5 c6 formation. But it practice has shown that even here this bishop fear and cat and early c4 is very sound. And I don't have like a one size fits all solution. It's an a live theoretical line. I would still prefer dc4, but things can change. You never know. Anyway, thanks for bringing me up to speed, really, because I'm not following developments in that line as closely as I should. Mm. Testerhase. That's an interesting username. It says, Hallo Jan. Zuerst herzlichen Glückwunsch zu all deinen Erfolgen in 2016. Thank you so much. Many thanks for your ultra-useful trilogy on the 1D4 openings, Catalan, Vienna and the Nimzo Indian. Thank you, thank you. It has helped me enormously and for the first time in my chess career I have a feeling I have a defense against 1d4. My question is, what to do against d4, knight f6, bishop f4? When white cleverly tries to avoid all the theory we put so much effort into learning when watching your series. Yeah, since we have like the same question five more times, I did get the memo that you need a new series on all these scary systems. And which are very popular. I'm not making fun of them at all. Magnus Carlsen played it, I think, three times in the World Rap Championship and got winning positions all the time. So for now I can only repeat what I just said already after d4, knight f6, bishop f4. I'm leaning towards d5, e3, c5, c3, knight c6. The trendy move is knight d2. And I think I played this in a recent Bundesliga game even, this move bishop f5 is a decent choice to, to my mind. Knight f3, e6, queen b3 is the only testing line. Then queen to c8, we have to cover the pawn. And white should try a move like knight h4. 
go after the two bishops. If you don't do that, then black just got his bishop out for free and can follow up with h6, even grabbing space with c4, b5. So knight h4 is the only try. Bishop e4 is a typical move to meet this knight h4. f3, bishop g6. And yeah, these positions after, let's say, g4, I don't know. The computer says rough equality. And I guess I would... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> You guys didn't really see anything I was talking about, right? So I'll back up. I'll, I'm gonna do this like 18 times per, per show normally. <laughs> so d5, c5, knight f6, knight d2, bishop bishop f5. This is what I mentioned earlier. Knight f3, e6, and the only critical line is queen b3, queen to c8, knight to h4, bishop e4, f3, bishop g6, G4, for whatever reason, seems to be a move that comes like. And I still have a hard time believing that white is better here. But it is very fresh territory. So it's certainly playable for white, but I think it's also playable for black. And that's the, the line I'm leaning towards recommending. Even though I don't think everything is terrible in these E6, bishop, followed by bishop D6 lines that everybody plays against Carlson either. We'll get to those later. So... I hope that helped a little bit. Velvet Hammer. What is the hammer saying? Thank you for your Nimzo Vienna Catalan series. Thank you guys so much. I'm, since I'm normally sitting here worried about me, myself and I, I'm never really aware that people out there are watching them. So it's, it's very good, very reassuring for me to hear that you guys are following this stuff, and some even like it. So yeah, thanks to everybody. Velvet Hammer is saying, I'm an older player, 45, with approximately 2000 USCF rating. If you were to do a series or on a defense against one E4, what would it be? What defense complements your approach against D4? I have a feeling you will recommend one E5, that is correct. I've never played the open games and have always leaned toward close positional systems like the CK, the Karakan, and French. I feel like I should play the open games, everyone says so. Add my name to the list, but I am horrible in open positions and don't handle the initiative very well. Is one, if one E5 is your recommendation, what do you think that even, do you think that even for a 45 year old, or is it too late and I should just stick with French Karakan? Um, no, I think, if you're happy with French Karakan, those are decent openings. But I always thought that e4, e5 is actually easier to play on general feel and principles than the semi-open or whatever we call it, the French and Karakan, where you get a lot of weirder structures. And I know it's called the open games, but you hardly ever get like razor sharp open positions with opposite castle kings. You normally get those in the Sicilian and so on. Well, the open games can normally play it, yeah, with general chess understanding. Like you go e5, you go knight c6, you get your pieces out, you castle kingside, and then there's some maneuvering and some ideas to know. Of course, things can get sharper if you play the marshal, for example, but you can also play the briar if you don't feel like doing anything sharp. So yeah, I, I don't think you need necessarily need to switch from the caro and the French. But the reason that you dislike open positions, strangely enough, I don't think is a reason to play the to not play the open games because they can be played with common sense and less calculating. So for mm, yeah, those who want to shy away from tactics and so on, I believe it's a sounder choice than both of your lines. So by all means, give it a try. Then again, I'm biased because I do like the e4 e5 world. Texmax22 is saying, Hi Jan, do you have any advice to how, how to learn an opening, how you learned your openings? Thanks. When can we expect another great video series? Another great? I don't know. Um, I don't know anything. Mm. So, do I have any advice? Not really, actually. I don't know. I don't know how these things work. Normally... Mm. No, I don't know. Like, I don't know how I learned my openings when I was younger. The old days. We didn't have engines weren't so strong. We didn't have computers. I always liked starting with 
a good book or nowadays you could say starting with a good video series but then from that starting point of course you also have to progress and do your own research a bit learn how to use engines learn how to yeah look at games by top players and then integrate them into your repertoire learn that a lot of authors are full of it me included you can't trust anybody it's gonna be much more educational if you start figuring stuff out for yourself not only are the computer says 0 20 here but also why are they doing this does this make sense to me do i have to believe young gustafsson preaching that no you only have to play main lines i believe yeah just putting thought into it but i always like having a starting point like a video series or a book so you kind of build my repertoire around but i don't think there's any shortcuts or secrets or anything overly useful i can tell you and as for when to expect another great video series i don't know i'm not planning anything um but it will happen debbie one says hi jan happy new year with all the usual thanks and congrats thank you too thank you too thank you debbie one recently i played white in the following classical game d4 f5 g3 knight f6 bishop g2 e6 c4 c6 knight c3 d5 bishop f4 bishop d6 knight h3 dc castle bishop f4 knight f4 g5 even though i consider this position great for white i went on to lose this game sorry to hear that and my question is knight eight knight h3 a futile attempt to activate my pieces or knight h3 is an idea that does not fit well in the stone wall but should rather be played against the laning route I always confuse the words futile and fertile so um i'm gonna have to think if you meant fertile or if you meant futile let's just bring up a chessboard and discuss it on there instead of doing all these linguistic exercises how did this go d4 f5 c4 c6 knight c3 not the main line but actually a decent little setup this d5 bishop f4 i quite like it and if black is nothing better than bishop to d6 then white must be in great shape right dc4 looks like a more critical move to me trying to go for some knight d5 or even bishop e7 but bishop d6 strikes me as an odd choice i'm not sure about your move knight h3 after bishop d6 everything looks nice right even e3 looks very good here just intending to go ef or gf and putting this knight on f3 or e2 i quite like white's position here knight h3 dc castle i don't know this bishop f4 knight f4 g5 your opponent did as you mentioned looks a bit excessive but if white black just castles here it's not obvious to me how you want to follow up well i guess white still has good compensation after e3 but the knight on h3 doesn't look ideal so long story short i like the line but i'm not sure i'm sold on this knight h3 move but after bishop d6 white has to be better in different ways e3 could be one bishop takes d6 for by just cd also looks like a bit of a white edge so yeah i quite like the opening but i'm not sure i'm a fan of knight to h3 p.s more banter bullets please yeah i'm not sure the the bullet game really leans itself works so well with banter but why not i've been working very hard on my bullet game recently so might do another one of those a y'all zero one is saying hello jan in your chess rear chess chess year in review video you mentioned that Carlsen's 1292 idea unleashed against Kramnik in the Norway chess tournament still looks strong to you yep I wonder if you could elaborate a bit specifically with regard to 12 f5 by black which seems like the most principled way to prevent white's plan of taking control of f5 I've seen in the database three different games where black played like that and they all develop very differently um yep <laughs> three games here yeah i've seen i'm not sure if i've seen those three games but i've looked at the move and i didn't like it once again my thoughts don't go very deep there but just look at it sometimes looks do matter oh no i'm sorry i messed up the move over here mm. how do we get here 
this, 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 this. Bishop e7, unfortunately, has to be played. This is this is a real point where I was trying to improve myself. Bishop e7, do something else. But if you go knight b6, I believe f4 was very strong. So bishop e7, knight e2, and now f5. It's such an ugly move. How can this work? This bishop. It's like it's not even a big pawn. It's just a pawn. It's slightly better than a pawn because it defends the pawns behind him. But no. Apart from aesthetics, I think white is just much better after g3. I really don't see how to justify this. I believe knight f6 was played in... I'm not sure. I'm not sure if g3 was played in all these games, but I've seen one game with knight f6, bishop h3, knight to g4. This position just looks terrible to me for black. White goes knight f4, king e2. Then he can slowly prepare f3. f5 will always be a serious weakness. This bishop is kind of dead, has no prospects. So... Yeah, I could make it work. You can always maneuver around here. And bishop takes h4, g h4. Normally is not an idea for black either. I am just not a fan. Believe me, I would have liked to make this work, but didn't want to BS anybody. I think it's a problem. Mm, Chucky is the best, is saying. In your Catalan series with 6 knight c3, you told us that you had a bit of a headache choosing your repertoire. What about Kramnik's 7 queen d6, which he played against Peter Svidler? Is this maybe a better solution, which satisfies you more? Yeah, that's, that's an interesting move. Of course, I noticed that game, which our friend Peter Svidler lost against Kramnik. The move looks ridiculous, but... In one of my rules in life is if Vladimir Kramnik played it in a tournament game, you can normally copy that with a clear conscience. And this is not an exception. It's a very playable line. How do we get there? g3, bishop e7, bishop g2, castles. Knight to c3, dc, knight e5. What did I give? I gave, I gave c5? I can't remember a thing. Knight c6? No, I probably gave knight c6. And yeah, queen d6 looks... It looks so strange. I was aware, even when I did my series, that the computer gave that, but I didn't take it seriously. But if Kramnik does this, it has to be respected, and I can't crack it. There's a bunch of critical lines that could be and should be analyzed further. Knight takes c4, queen a6, b3, queen b3. Mm, queen a4 is also a move going for the endgame. But it does look like black is holding his own. This looks critical to me. b3, rook d8, castle, c5. Computer gave some weird move. a4, intending knight b5. But it did seem like even here, black was holding his own. So possibly, I haven't spent that much time on it. But queen d6 is a way to make life a bit easier than my recommendation of knight c6. Which also holds, but I think I gave the reasons why I wasn't that thrilled about it. Hmm... So yeah, good point, Mr... who was it? Mr... Chucky is the best. Brief break to clean my nose, because I have this winter... winter cold? The winter colder. Um, and you guys don't want to see this. Oh, I shouldn't be plugging. Whatever tissues I'm using. See you And we're back. Wow, I know it still looks reddish. And where were we? Pada, Pada One owns you. That's probably bad news for any Sith Lord. Pada One starts owning you. Hayan, I'm interested in your opinion about 8a5. Interesting in the following line d4, d5, c4, e6, knight, c3, c6, e4. D, E, knight, E, 4, bishop, B, 4, bishop, D, 2, queen, D, 4, bishop, B, 4, queen, E, 4, bishop, E, 2, A, 5. It has been played by a few 24-hour player, and my engine likes it at first glance. Thanks. P.S. It would be great if Peter could do a series on the open Spanish. There is, beside Michalewski's book, not much coverage out there. 
I'll pass it on. I'm not sure how big of an expert Peter is on the open Spanish, to be honest with you. Um, so what was it? Ah, yeah, this triangle thingy. A line I used to play, but I haven't really been in touch with it recently either. I say that about a lot of things, but I'm sort of, yeah, kind of retired. But I still do follow the occasional opening. However, this trend was another trend that I have been missing. After bishop e2, people started playing a5. So I haven't spent a lot of time looking at this. My computer at first glance likes white after bishop d6. I think it gave, what did it give? Knight h6, queen d2, knight f5, bishop a3, queen d4, bishop d3. And I said white was better. So I would have to spend some more time here. Basically, my answer is, can I get back to you? No, nah, probably I won't get back to you. So I sh shouldn't, shouldn't say that. My computer, which is fairly strong, did not like this for, for black after a5, bishop d6. But I really can't speak on it with any authority. So you probably know more than me. And I have to thank you for pointing out this trend to me. Because I'm a dinosaur, I'm still in 9a6 land. Which I still think is playable, but it's a little scary. Um, who, oh, who's next? I was gonna say Mr. Cripple Dragon, but he's not a premium member. Sorry, Cripple Dragon, not gonna be able to do it. Quantum Blaze says, Hi Jan, Happy New Year. As a Grunfeld player, what would you recommend against this type of setup? I'm not sure of about the name. D4, Knight F6, Knight F3, G6, G3. I've been playing D5 and going for a symmetrical type position. Reinforcing d5 with c6 and sometimes e6. Is this the best option for a player with a more aggressive style? Or is there something you think would fit better? Thank you, Quantum Blaze. Hmm, I don't know. What you're saying is fairly topical at the highest chess levels. Not sure about the move order normally they go c4 a bit earlier but yeah there's in general three approaches you can play with d5 as you mentioned you can play with an early c5 then you have to live with white going d5 but most white players i'm not sure that's true maybe most white players would play d5 a lot of them would play c4 like me but here there's some interesting systems for black with knight c6 or with castles queen c7 there's a bunch of playable systems Hmm, so c5 could be one move you want to look into. If this d5 doesn't bother you too much with Benoni-esque positions, maybe b5 you can go in this move order. Um, the other approach, of course, is to play in King's Indian style, which is not my cup of tea, and most Grunfeld players won't do either. But here, if white goes c4, of course there's many established systems, like knight c6, knight bd7, c6, whatever. And yeah, the third approach is to play with d5, as most Grunfeld players do. Here after castles, castles, if white goes c4 so late, then you can consider taking after knight a3. There are some sharp lines here, like c3 takes c5, that are maybe a bit more interesting than playing with c6. You mentioned e6, I don't ever see black going e6 in these positions, so easy on the e6. But yeah, it's a matter of taste, and for me it would also be a matter of opponent if you go c5, d6, or d5. But for a Grunfeld player, playing d5, and then either capturing on c4 when given the chance, or playing with c6, is a fairly natural choice indeed. Um, where can I point you to for more information? Probably Peter Svidler covers all these issues in his video series with more insight than I will ever have. Um, who is next, though? I should have insight into that. <laughs> um, trying to open a browser window, which in theory, in this day and age, we should be capable of doing. It's the year 2017. I still don't know the symbol for my browser. Oscar Shales, whose name I always struggle with. Is it Oscar Shales or Oscar Shales? Says, hello Jan, why don't black players like playing against the 
QGD exchange variation. I don't mean the variation played in Carlson Kramnik, but those variations with Bishop E7, Knight BD7, etc. Evans Vinek Ratchek managed to hold Will Black against Wesley So's minority attack at Baku Olympiad. So disrespectful. Spinek Ratchek is a long established 2600 player. He's not going to lose every game to Wesley So. But no, I'm, I hear your point. For example, I play the QGD exchange as white, but I don't like this f3, e4 and play in center setup because somehow I always end up with an isolated e or d pawn. So I play with a minority attack. However, when I play against the minority attack as black, I try to have pawns on a6, b5, c6, d5 and put my knight on c4. Of course, all of that when white has already played b4 and I had very good results with it against stronger player than me. I was 1800 at the time, they were above 2000 since my opponents couldn't find a way through over the board. Could you please explain this issue to me a little? I hope my question is meaningful at all. I'm not sure I get your question. Sounds like you're dropping knowledge, but don't have so much of a question. Is it why don't black players like this? Because I feel like they're slightly, or they feel like they're slightly worse, or many of those do, and this dream of getting the knight to c4 that you mentioned, it's not realistic in so many a case. But yeah, let's put some position on the board. <clears throat> oh, this is what we had earlier with knight f8. Can I castle here? Something like this. This is with the knight on f3. You can also play with the knight on e2, of course. I don't know, I always thought white was a bit better, even in these old lines. Of course, it's a matter of taste, and I'm not saying that black is lost or anything, but typically good play leads to something. <clears throat> something like this. And here you're never in time to do your little b5 thingy and put a knight on c4. In general, against an experienced white minority attack player, you will seldomly get that idea in. Instead you will often get, I don't know, I think I bungled the move orders a little bit here, but you will often get a position like this. Actually I really bungled it. So here you can go CBA, BA5, which is probably fine. And also an important idea to keep in mind. But my point was that normally, oh boy, normally you're not gonna get to have that much fun. Let me try again. Uh -huh. Why did I go a5 this time? Let me do this. b4, a6, a4, bishop f5, b5. This is a bad move or takes, takes. Here we're probably not having as much fun with this idea because white goes b6 and we must suffer. So typical play is something like this. This is what I meant to show. I think we had it earlier via a different move order. Here, let's say bc or rook fc1 first. And you get something like this, which is not a disaster at all, but it's not that much fun for black. And in the lines with knight g2, rook e8, castle, I think you don't have to put your queen to c2 so early, but you can. What is theory here? f3? Uh -huh. I don't know. You have to be a little careful with your timing of e4 because you might run into takes in c5. I guess that's how you manage to end up with an isolated pawn. But if you're slightly careful, white is also for preference here. In my opinion, it's a bit more pleasant to play with white. And a lot of people feel that way. So, well, I do understand the points you mentioned. And if you're comfortable playing those, I'm not going to advise against it. It's, yeah, it's slightly passive. It's not doesn't mean that you're not going to make a draw. More often than not, it's perfectly playable, but black players often are looking for a bit more upside, and those that's a bit hard to find for me at least in these Queen's Gambit declines. Mm. I'm attentively reading the discussion in chat. I'm not sure why though, you guys are so wrong. Anyway, let's move on. Um. Fes Matos says, hello Jan, I wanted to ask you to ask about the 3e5 in Karo Cam. 
things look okay until knight b3, which is supposed to slow down c5. It really does not, and also it is not clear to me what white achieves. c4 always gives black a good d5 square and computer goes for weird g4 lines. What does white want in these types of positions? Um... I don't understand the question, I'm sorry. Very sorry, Fesmatos. Let's put the Karakan on the board and try to figure it out. But I don't get it. So what you're saying is things are okay until they go knight d2, knight b3, but that's also not good. So basically you're just saying black is fine. Maybe, and there are certainly specialists or many people that play these lines, many very strong players that play these lines. The main line for white nowadays is still knight f3 followed by bishop e2, allowing the c5 but then going for some very quick development with bishop e3. And there is a line, which I'm not sure what the status is, with knight d2, e6, knight b3. Maybe that's what you're referencing. Where black goes knight d7, a6, and then c5 at a later point normally. Which as far as I know is quite playable for... <clears throat> for black. But yeah, maybe that is your point, right? I'm not sure, I'm just very confused by the question. In general my feeling is that these positions have to be a little better for white with the extra space, but you have to be very, very good at handling them and at understanding them to play these lines with white. So I'm not sure I would be comfortable playing this with white. However, super strong players tend to feel that this is the way to go for white. And yeah, I'm sorry, I really just don't fully understand your question. Dirty Larry is saying, hello Jan, what do you think about this opening d4, knight f6, c4, knight c6, the two knights tango? It was used by Mexican GM Carlos Torre long time ago. Keep doing your great work, I love your shows. Thank you, Dirty Larry. Thank you for your answer and Happy New Year. Yeah, play the two knights tango sometimes in Blitz, but I don't think it's great. <laughs> The main problem with it, for me, is from a practical perspective. If white goes knight f3, the best move is e6, knight c3. I'm aware a3 is probably the main line here, but let's just say knight c3, knight c3 bishop b4, queen c2. We end up playing a line of the Nimzo Indian that I consider to be better for white. After castles, wherever this goes, castles, bishop d2, d6, a3. Takes, takes. I think white is better here. So there's not even a lot of upside if guys like me can just stay in their Quincy 2 Nimzo repertoire. Objectively, I also think that if white goes for it, plays knight c3, not knight f3, black goes e5, white plays d5, knight e7, let's even be primitive, play e4, knight g6, and now the move h4 looks quite strong, provoking h5, and here bishop g5. I think white is a quite seriously better in these as well, even though it's pleasant to play this knight maneuver than to put your bishop on an active square. It always feels good, especially in blitz. I don't think that these lines are fully playable, so it's a decent little surprise weapon, but I do not think it's made for everyday use. Heike, number 12, is saying, Hi Jan, Happy New Year, and here is my question. GM Sergei Tivyakov is the experienced player of the Scandinavian with 3 queen d6. He gives following line as the most critical. Sounds like a risky endeavor on his part. If he's the experienced player, why would he give people the most critical line? Then again, I'm trying to do that here. <clears throat> on all the openings. Anyway, e4, d5, takes, takes, knight c3, queen d6, d4, knight f6, knight f3, c6, knight e5, knight d7, knight c4, queen c7. Queen f3, knight b6, bishop f4, queen d7, knight b6, a b, long castles, e6. What is your opinion about this position? Is it playable for black? And why played Carlsen this against Karana in Baku? I don't know. Carlsen likes playing the Scandinavian against Karana. Maybe he's, he feels that this pawn d5 will upset 
Karan greatly. Or he feels that Karana is quite good against the Berlin. So you have to do something else. I do not know. And anyway, I don't have a clue at all about <clears throat> these lines. Looks looks a bit fishy to me to put the queen on d6, but I'm aware there's more to it than meets the eye. I don't know any theory here. You can't go f4. F4 looks like a move. Anyway, knight c4, queen c7, a4. No, that's what Karana played, right? Queen f3. Um, was your line? Yeah, or Tvyakov's line. Should have four queen t7. Now you take? Why would you take? Why not long castles? Doesn't that look more natural than... <laughs> ah, then there's some queen g4. I don't know. All of this is new to me. So takes, takes, long castles. No, there's no queen g4. So confusing. But yeah, ah, that must be it. Um, yeah, what about this position? You go e6, bishop c4. Should be I don't know, strategically black is fine, but he might get checkmated after some g4, g5, bishop e5, some d5 breakthrough. I have no clue. I can tell you the computer's evaluation. It says 0 0.22 for white, so that kind of means playable, I guess. But I'm sorry, I really lack expertise on the Queen d6 Scandinavian, so I can't comment if this is the best line for white or if this position is playable for black. You have to figure it out for yourself. I don't trust it. Hmm. Thomas R is saying, Hi Jan, Happy New Year to you, your two ladies, your daughter, probably as a mother, and others at Chess24. Thank you. My question, what would you recommend against the Peerts? Not that popular at the highest level. No central part of World Championship preparation for Carlson, but quite common at amateur online blitz level. For decades, yes, I am aging. Currently 1900 ish player. I played e4, d6, d4, knight f6, knight c3, g6, f4, but I'm no longer that happy with it. Ideally, something similarly ambitious and something more cautious. So, ambitious and cautious. So, I can. Ah, two different lines. So, I can vary depending on mood and maybe opponent. So, ambitious and cautious and not the Austrian attack, which is probably the main line. I don't know. I never play e4, so it's once again not my main area of expertise. I know my friend Paco Vallejo, he's very high on this move. Bishop g5, tending to follow up with queen d2, long castles. Then, according on the situation, go f4, e5, sometimes h4, or sometimes just knight f3. He's very happy with that. And normally he knows what he's talking about. There were some subtleties to it, of course. But this bishop g5 always struck me as an interesting move. Else, yeah, I'm not sure why you don't like f4. That does seem to be the main line. Um, what else is there? I really don't have a clue, honestly. I never get this position. Um, in my youth, I used to play a lot of bishop e3, knight f3, queen d2, and see what happens. And I believe nowadays there's a lot of lines like bishop e3 followed by h3, g4 are popular as well. So, yeah, all these things strike me as very playable. In general, white is better. He's occupying the center. Black hasn't fought for it at all. And white hasn't even yet played c4, so there's not a weakness on d4 or no worry about overexpanding. Therefore, I believe, yeah, many setups will give white a slight edge, a playable position. But I am aware that it's fully playable for black and does have the appeal that you don't have to know so much to play with black. Therefore, it will always be around. But I don't have a wide repertoire here. I would probably go f4 if pressed. Well, I think after both knight f3 or bishop d3, white is a little better. So if you're already playing the best line, sometimes it's not worth switching to an alternative. Pramod NVS is saying, Hello Jan, wish you a very happy new year, thank you. How did you like the recent Sherlock episode? Coming to chess, I need few lines with black on how to handle the Jocko piano with black. 
when white plays b4 to push the black by bishop and then a4. How to regroup the black pieces and make a plan. Let's say a line like e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, bishop c5, c3, knight f6, d3, d6, b4, bishop b6, 7, a4, and so on. When shall we play h6 as black and knight e7? Mm, I'll just answer your line and tell you what to do there, because as usual, I'm not comfortable giving <laughs> broad plans about just as massive an opening as the Choco Piano. But since you gave me a line for a change, I can't tell you what to do in that position. Hmm. Oops, sorry. B4. You move the bishop away. Bishop B6. A4. Threatening A5. Winning the bishop. So we better do something about it. And the best move in this position is to play A5. Stop white from going a5 himself and more or less forcing him to play b5. Now the knight is under attack, so we regroup it. We go knight to e7. Now our plan is to play castles. Knight to g6, pawn to c6, pawn to d5, pawn to h6, rook to e8. And enjoy a very reasonable life on the black side of a board. I believe I even had a game in this line, didn't I? I think I won a game against Mr. Feigin back in the days, but there might be even higher level games like Karana Anand and so on and so forth. So yeah, your plan is to go castles, knight g6, c6, h6, rook e8, and then d5, timed correctly. <laughs> I hope that helped. Bill1226 is saying, Happy New Year, Jan, and thanks for making chess24.com the best chess website. Thank you, Bill. I would like to request that Chess24 publish a video and ebook about the Queen's Indian defense as a black repertoire option to pair with the Nimzo. It certainly has a strong pedigree, but gets much less coverage and would be a nice addition. You've come to the wrong place, Bill, because I much prefer pairing the Nimzo with the move 3, knight f3, d5, as frankly do pretty much all of the world's best players. Even Kayakin, Mr. Queen's Gambit, Queen's Indian, did not play Queen's Indian in the match against Magnus Carlsen. He hinted, at least, that he had something else prepared, because he played d4, knight f6, knight f3, d5, while Queen's Indian players typically play 2e6. So, there is a very strong movement that has shifted away from the Queen's Indian and normally there's reasons for those things. It's still a playable opening, but I much prefer b6, not d5. After b6, g3 is not is the main line nowadays. After bishop a6, one problem is that you have to know a lot of things. You have to know queen c2, queen b3, queen a4, b3, knight bd2, and all of these moves are major theoretical lines. Chess-wise, recently Kayakin struggled a bit in the candidates. He didn't lose any of these games because he defended amazingly, but he did struggle a little bit in this line after knight c3, d5, c, d, e, d, bishop g2, where, yeah, it's a typical structure that's supposed to be a little better for white because of the pawn on b6, leaving some weaknesses on the queen side. And yeah, I'm not a big fan, but maybe someday we will find a bigger fan of the Queen's Indian, and somebody will do a video series on it. Not sure about it. Um, yeah, I very strongly feel that knight of 3 d5 gives you more options than the Queen's Indian and is a more useful repertoire because even if you play the Queen's Indian, you still have to be ready, or let's say you're happy with the Queen's Indian, you still have to be ready to meet g3, stopping the Queen's Indian, and you have to play the Catalan or against c5. So, yeah. It doesn't avoid that much. Well, I think the, the upside is limited. But it's not a bad opening, don't get me wrong. Playable, just not my cup of tea. Chessfan123 is saying, Hi Jan, my repertoire is the Zamish King's Indian with white. However, I have problems facing d4, d6, because black could try to transpose 
to the King's Indian defense, where I'm committed to an early knight f3. d4, d6, c4, e5, knight f3, knight bd7, knight c3, g6. I don't think that's a problem, but I get your point. What do you recommend as an answer to this move order? Is it better to play 2e4, but I do not like to do not like e4 structures? Or to learn an additional King's Indian system? Or is there an independent way of playing? Thank you, your shows are great. Thanks, chess fan123. Um, hmm, Alright, let's get to the bottom of this. First of all, yeah, you're not wrong. That would be a problem. Like, I normally play systems based on knight f3. So d4, d6. I can just go knight f3. While, yeah, the line you gave doesn't convince me. After c4, e5, knight f3, knight bd7 would be great. Because then after knight c3, you just get a king's union with a knight committed to d7, which is just fine for white. Doesn't matter if you normally play the nimzo or not. But e4 is a bigger problem in this move order you gave. So d4, d6, c4, e5, I'm not sure, you could try to make e4 work here, but I have a feeling that black is doing all right there. So what I would do, I would play e4, and after knight f6, maybe f3 could be an option for you. Not sure it is, but if they go e5, which they normally do, this is very same as she in nature. You put the bishop on e3, knight to c3, See what happens. And I believe this is supposed to be quite playable for white. Something like this. So that could be an option. After f3, there are some weird lines like d5, which is, are a bit of a nuisance. But most King's Indian players, starting with d4, d6, will also not be able to play 3d5 here. <clears throat> Normally it transposes to some freaky version of the French. So... Yeah, that's probably what I would do. Or, yeah, any normal line against the Pirts, like we talked about earlier, this bishop g5 or the Austrian attack. Many an option there. But you're right, it will get you out of your repertoire if your opponent is also an expert on c4, e5. Yeah, it's not going to be easy to get the same as here. So that is true. But he pays a high price by allowing 2, e4 which many people will not be willing to pay. I'm being informed I missed a question. Which question is that? Ah, this one? Mr. Fructoso Bedogus? My apologies to Fructoso Bedogus. It's not a short name, how could I overlook it? He's saying, hi Jan, happy new year. Same to you, sir. My question is, do you think that repertoire with mainly the French versus e4 and the Grunfeld versus 1d4 is logical in terms of the kind of positions? Or the French is better together with the Slav and the Grunfeld with the Sicilian? Best regards. I don't know. I've never been a big believer in these things like people saying I want to play a light square strategy with black or a dark square strategy with black. Therefore, well, a light square strategy would probably be I'm gonna combine the French with the Slav or with the Queen's Gambit declined and put my pawns on light squares. I don't really believe in that. The French can become very sharp if you interpret it that way. So can the Grunfeld be. Both are, especially the Grunfeld is more of a move by move opening, concrete, as we like to say. And you can interpret the French that way as well, if you play whatever, the Vinaver, one of these sharp lines. And against knight d2. I don't even know what sharp lines there are here. Bishop e7, knight f6. And so, yeah, I don't think that's a horrible fit. Personally, I'm not a fan of the French, but that's not really for any particular reason. I just never played it. Um, so... If you both, yeah, interpret them concretely, like Morozevich or Vitugov or these modern French players, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. The Sicilian, yeah, is certainly a fit with the Grunfeld because both are sharp openings fighting for the initiative and move by move base. But I believe these theories normally don't hold 
that much water as for logical repertoires. Um, just play, whatever suits you. And if you have bad results with the French and good with the Grunfeld, then maybe replace the French or vice versa, then maybe replace the Grunfeld. But I'm not sure that one should focus on light squared strategies or black squared strategies or anything like that. Just play chess. Mm. Jawbreaker saying, Hi Jan, best way to meet Banco Gambit with white. Thanks in advance. Short and to the point. This was his question, sorry. Um, I don't know. I normally avoid it because I'm chicken. And also because normally players playing the Benko, in my case, are lower rated than me. And you don't want them to be able to blitz out the first 25 moves. Not so much because it's all theory, but because the Benko is a bit of a pattern opening. Like normally it's always the same stuff. Hmm. I'm just drawing some random arrows, but normally I try to get them to think earlier. And since I'm a creature of habit, I will play my 3 knight f3, or 1 knight f3, or 1 c4, or whatever. So, the best way can be very different according on circumstances. Chess wise, the most popular line in recent years has been to just go for this, when after bishop takes a6. Or I think we've covered this. <laughs> White has been doing pretty well in this complex. I don't know, maybe I'm screwing up the move order, but I don't think I am. With a4 followed by queen e2. This is supposed to be quite nice for White, therefore black players have started delaying bishop takes a6, trying to make something happen here. And as far as I know, the discussions are still ongoing here. Bishop e2 or bishop d3 or a7. I have a hunch why it's better in all of those things, but I'm not super up to date. So yeah, I would consider this the best way. But as I mentioned in the introduction, the best way can be very different subjectively from objectively sometimes. Um... Duke Crusher is saying, what opening would you personally recommend after 1e4? Personally, I would recommend 1e5, but personally, I would also sometimes get frustrated with boring lines after 1e5, like whatever, let's say the Four Knights, the Scottish Four Knights is not the most exciting of openings, to be personally honest with you. <laughs> Stuff like this. And therefore, I am often compelled to Replace my beloved 1e5 by playing the move 1c5 if I look for a sharper game. And personally, when playing c5, I alternate between all kinds of Sicilians, whatever I feel is appropriate for the situation. I play a bit of Dragon, a bit of Taibanov, a bit of what's called a Rouser. So, yeah. Why am I going on so long? 1e5 is the best move. Just, you know, don't give any space in the center. Vanator is saying. Yeah, in the Spanish, why is the 8d3 anti martial considered less good than the mainline 8c3 or other anti martials 8h3, 8a4, 8d4, and occasionally even 8a3? I know many strong players pl have played it Kasparov, Adams, Karana, etc., and that it was a favorite of Judith Polger and Ilya Smirin. After 8 d6 c3, or even 8 bishop b7 9 c3, or knight bd2, the position seems to veer into the slow play lines associated with an early d3 in the Spanish, which are quite popular right now. I am a player rated 1900 till 2000 who feels most comfortable in the close positions of the old mainline Ruy Lopez or in the 4 d3 anti Berlin. So, why not the 8 d3 anti Marshall? Is there some obvious reason that I am missing as to why d3 is such a popular motive in other variations of the Spanish, but not in the Marshall? Thanks and best wishes to you and yours. Thank you, Van Ater. Which one is it? You did a lot of name dropping. You're saying all these people play it. Kasparov, Adams, Karana, Judith Polgar, Ilya Smirin. But then you're saying it's not popular. What am I missing? Am I missing something obvious? You can't have it both ways. You can't say it's not popular 
but I have all these name drops backing it up. Anyway, let's have a look at it. And I think it's, it's playable, but there are reasons why it's less popular than all the other sidelines, especially 63. If you enjoy the slow, slower Spanish, you might want to play 63 and not combine rookie 1 and t3, in my opinion. So yeah, the problem with this one is it's not really putting any pressure on black. If you go h3 here, then after d6, you can still play c3, intending to play d4. Well, if black goes bishop b7, now we go d3, and this bishop has committed to the b7 square, which is not ideal against the e4, d3 formation. If you start with d3, you're not making this bishop commit. Bishop b7 would be a silly move here. Instead, black just plays d6, threatening knight a5, white goes c3, and here black goes knight a5, which is a move you often don't get in in comparable lines, like, let's say, d3, b5, bishop b3, d6, a4, bishop d7, c3, castles. Here black would be happy if he could play knight a5, c5 next, but white plays bishop c2, stopping that plan. So stopping that plan is important many times, and you can't do it here. Oops, sorry. Um, and as far as I know, this is yeah, just supposed to be a very decent version of the Chigurin with the pawn on d3 already. Of course, there's still room for play, and if you're comfortable in these slow maneuvering positions, by all means go for it, but you allow black to equalize without any problems. And also, he's not gonna be lost for moves over the next couple moves. It's pretty much autopilot stuff. So that's the reason why 8d3 is not as popular, but it does lead to a full game with a board full of pieces. Therefore, it's not bad either. But there are reasons why these other also slow looking lines are slightly more popular. I hope that explained it a bit. Chess Chipmunk is saying, Hi Jan, Happy New Year! Wish you and Chess24 an excellent 2017. For a couple of years, I've been playing 1d4, 1c4, and 1f3, but recently decided to come back to 1e4, which I don't like because I hate facing the Sicilian. However, I love the strategically rich positions after e4, e5 from both sides. In response to the Sicilian, I tried the main lines and also a lot of side lines unsuccessfully. My recipe now is to play e4, c5, c4. And if my opponent plays Sicilian, transpose into an English Bodvinic setup. Do you think there are any flaws with this idea? I saw on the database, Dominguez played this eight times against elite opposition. We got the name drop again. There's always a name drop. If people want to play a random sideline that doesn't have a good reputation, they will always have one big name that played it a couple times to back it up. And it's true that Dominguez played this a bunch of times, but it's also true that there was in Blitz games and that he, what did he score, 50% minus one? I don't think you had a great score with it. So my advice would be, why don't you play e4 against opponents where you have a feeling or where you've prepared that you will get an opening you like, like these e4, e5 slow maneuvering positions. And if they play Sicilian, then you play d4, c4 or knight f3. That sounds like an easier fix to your problem because I don't know, I've never looked at it, but it just looks wrong, e4, c5, c4. You're not developing and you're leaving yourself with a giant hole on d4, which, yeah, I don't know why. Um, and you're saying you're transposing to the Botvinnik English, but normally this Botvinnik English you're referencing, that's more a setup like, I don't know how to get there, but... <laughs> Something like this, right? Where black has played e5 already, which is very different. Here after knight e2, d3, f4, and so on. Here white has very clear plans. Well, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if white is worse here, but it looks like a very, very sad weapon to me. e6 followed by knight g, e7, or d6 followed by rook b8, a6, b5. It looks playable, but I think you're making your life much harder. And it's also not obvious for me what White's plan is here. So 
No, I'm not a fan. If you don't like open Sicilians, you can either go back to your old D4, C4, Knight F3 repertoire, or you can play some of the not so open Sicilians, like Bishop B5 check, or Bishop C4 in this position, G3 in this position, and Bishop B5 in this position. All of those would make a lot more sense to me than 2 C4. George D says, Hello Jan, I just recently discovered Chess24 and find it to be a very valuable site. Thank you, George D. I've watched several of your clinics, videos, etc. and have learned a lot from them. Thanks for the excellent work. Thank you once again. My question is general, no variations. Good, let's get rid of that chessboard for a while. In the Bogo Indian, after 3 bishop b4 check, 4 knight d2 is sometimes played. Assuming that after an eventual a3, there is no money in playing the bishop back to e7. That's a bold assumption, because that is the main line. Castles a3, bishop to e7. White's choice seems to be based on the desire to keep the bishop pair. Is there more to it than that? So I take it you're not a big believer in the bishop pair. I, on the other hand, am quite a big fan. If you can get the two bishops for free, that's quite a little something. But if white plays four bishop d2, then after the exchange of bishops, white sometimes recaptures with the knight. This seems counterintuitive. White could recapture with queen, develop it somewhat, and then position his knight on its natural c3 square. At least one database I looked at statistically favors the knight recapture. I'm interested in your grandmasterly take on the situation. Is there something hidden in here that I can't see? Some positional or strategic considerations not accessible to me? Or maybe <clears throat> the desire to keep the queen on white squares? Another kind of play for the knight? Thank you very much for your help. Best wishes for the new year and congratulations on being a father, George. Thank you. Um, okay, I think we're gonna need a chessboard anyway. So, first of all, while your assumption is correct that the main idea of knight b2 is to get the two bishops, I do think that is quite an achievement and most black players think so too and therefore this line is actually the main line here. Once again arguing this knight is misplaced on d2 which leads us to your next point. I agree, if black were to take here, queen takes is the logical move, putting this knight on c3 next and is also at least by a 2 to 1 ratio, the most popular move, according to my database. So I'm not sure what database you had. What I think could cause your confusion is there is a popular line. It starts with queen e7, g3, knight c6, bishop g2, and now takes. And here, white indeed should take with the knight, because there's a little tactical point. If you go queen d2, which you would like to do, followed by knight c3, then there's knight e4, queen c2, queen b4 check. And white either loses the right to castle or a pawn, believe it or not. Or he gets his pawn structure spoiled. Something bad will happen after knight d2 takes. Can't keep those guys. Therefore, in this specific position, white has to play knight b takes d2. But even here, white normally goes knight c3 instead of bishop g2 to avoid that fate. So your observation is correct that white would want to take with the queen and put the knight on c3. I'm not sure what database gave you more knight takes d2s than queen takes d2s though. Strange database. Mr. Jogger. What's Mr. Jogger saying? First, I believe it's, we have this one question rule because we have too many people here anyway. The growth of Chess24 has made these opening clinics hard to get through. First, if black answers 1 out of 6 to 1 d4 and white decides to go for a Fianchetto line, what approach do you think is less drawish? Going for a King's Indian defense setup or A or B? Going for a kit setup or a Grunfeld approach? And A. But the less drawers also includes that probably you're going to lose a lot more. So that's the price you might have to pay. Um, but yeah, A is probably less draws because after D6 the structure is less balanced than after D5 with the symmetrical structure. 
Okay, so that was a qu short question. I will very shortly answer your second question too. What do you think of birds opening 1f4? It's, it's not losing, it's not great either. After d5, black is equal, therefore white does not play very often. It's okay that you forgot to say hi. Hi. Miklovsky is saying, hello Jan, happy new year and thanks for all the great comments and facial expressions in 2016. Yeah, thank you. And looking forward to your contributions in the coming year. As white, I play the Fianchetto against the Banco Gambit. As advocated by Boris Avruch in his great 1d4 opening book. He play, I played against Marcus Rugger and he delayed the capture of bishop takes a6. He's sneaky, isn't he? He shortly commented on this after the game, saying that it serves as an antidote against the 8 rook b1 variation, the one Avruch gives as a repertoire move. Apparently, in some lines, the bishop can go to f5 and harass the rook on b1. Can you give some information on how to play correctly as white if black delays the pawn capture on a6? This is more of a lecture than a question. Avruch, mm, rook b1 with b3 next. Yeah, I got it. Um, 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 yep. And no bishop takes a6 early. Yep. Once again, Mr. Rugger, who tends to be extremely well prepared, is correct. And he played a very clever move order there, which I believe is one reason why nowadays... Um, ah, sorry. I think this is the move order from your game, right? Yep. This is one reason why nowadays maybe this g3 in the pure Benko is not as popular anymore. This is a clever little move order. Because, yeah, as mentioned, after bishop takes a6, this rook b1 is a popular idea, preparing b3 as soon as possible. While in this move order, knight f3, knight b7, here rook b1 looks a bit random, since black hasn't committed to bishop takes a6 yet. After castles knight b6, rook b1 clearly doesn't make sense because of bishop f5. So white has to do something else. I can't say I'm highly qualified on these topics. I can tell you that my computer gives... What does my computer give? The move bishop to f4 here, which looks like an interesting way to play. Preparing rook c1 and then maybe b3. So that's pretty much as smart as I am here. Bishop takes a3 and wants b3. Knight e8, rook c1, and says this is kind of playable for white. And who am I to doubt my computer? The line you gave, I believe this has been played a bit, knight b6, knight d2, but now bishop takes a6, I have a feeling that black is fine. There's even these weird dances, right? Queen c2, bishop b7, e4, back, having provoked e4, now knight g4. All these things are coming, I think black is fine here. Hope that helped a little bit. Hmm... Let me clean my nose one more time. I think it's for everyone's benefit, not just for the benefit of Mr. K. And we're back with the next question. What is the next question, though? Be quick or be duck is not a premium member, so I can't answer his thoughtful question. I'm sorry. Cappy2718 says, Hi, Jan. Nice outfit. I'm not sure you've seen my outfit. And the sleeves are a little long, right? Um, but thank you. Here are a few questions to befuddle amuse you. This is a serious show, Mr. Cappy. Have computers made it desirable to play variations that are less than optimal in live professional events? The answer, as usual, is it depends. Um, um, as for... Yeah, I'm not supposed to answer more than one question. What defense to e4 do you suggest for mid-level club players who don't like to memorize a lot? e5. Can you share any clever openings ideas that you found while helping MC in New York? No, 
Thank you for your answers. Congratulations on becoming a papa. Thank you. AIS Thesis says, Hi Jan, what do you think is the most boring, solid and timid way to meet the King's Indian defense and the Benoni with white? Mm, that sounds like right up my alley, but it's tough to be overly boring against the King's Indian. Believe me, I've tried. So, I don't know. Maybe you want to join Team London system. That's kind of boring-ish. Trumpowski. Or if you want to go really chicken, Chickenville, you can play the golden exchange line. The problem is when you play this exchange line trying to make a draw, normally people lose because you still have to play kind of actively because you have this hole on e5, on d4, sorry. Therefore, yeah. I'm not sure this is a great idea trying to be playing it, trying to be boring and solid. The line I used to play, it's also very chicken, but slightly more to the point. Castle, knight c6, and now de5, de bishop g5. Now that this knight is committed to c6. Um, the Benoni, yeah, true chickens like me, we don't allow the Benoni. We start with knight f3. If we smell any Benonis nearby, you get this no Benonis. It's also hard to be chicken in the Benoni. Then again, there's many setups that are quite nice for white. So sometimes you gotta bite the bullet and just play one of these nice setups. Like knight e2, knight g3, knight f3, h3, not h4. Bishop f4, knight f3, e3, h3. Many playable setups, but it's very hard to be super chicken in this structure. Or you shouldn't be. But you can always not allow it. Here, last chance to play knight f3. I hope that helped you tremendously. Mr. Smashing Lad or Smash In Glad, I'm not sure which one it is, says Happy New Year, Jan. Tidy work from you in 2016. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. I note that the 4 bishop f4 exchange variation of the Slav in the Slav, of the Slav, in particular d4, d5, c4, c6, cd, cd, bishop f4, knight c6, e3, knight f6. Knight c3, a6, bishop e2, is again causing black some problems. How did you note that? Because I don't think the results of the engine evaluations are really bearing that out. So is that a bit of wishful thinking maybe, smashing that? I'm not sure. I also remember that you at one point planned to do a video series on the exchange slot. Yeah, I planned many things and I hardly ever follow through. Um, but yeah, that is true, but I got too sick of even looking at it because there's, there's not much there. But then change your mind, presumably because you decided black could equalize comfortably. True. Which line in particular do you think gives white least chance of an opening nibble? Thanks in advance. Hmm. I, yeah, I'm not convinced by the line that you mentioned causing any great trouble, but I'm also oop, <coughs> not as much in touch with exchange Slav developments as I once used to be. So you're saying a6, bishop e2 is an idea. And after bishop f5? <coughs> I'm not sure what the big point is, but yeah, I always had the feeling that black doesn't particularly have to play a6 in any of these positions and can just start with bishop f5. And I've always been very stuck here. I'm aware there's all these modernish trends with queen b3 and so on. But I don't really believe in any of them. So yeah, that has been an even bigger roadblock for me than a6. But I also struggle believing that this is anything exciting for what, to be honest. That goes for all openings. I don't want to trash talk the exchange slav. Because black is fine in every opening, if you analyze it. The exchange slav yet gives, it leaves a little less scope to, for outplaying people sometimes because the structure is so defined in the center. But I wouldn't be surprised if one day I resume my love affair with it. For now, yeah, it's on hold. On hold? Bipolinen or Bipolinen is saying, Hi Jan. I have recently started to play one B3 followed by E3 and a four. But when I meet e5, I do not really know what to play. What do you recommend there? I don't know. I would naturally lean towards a move that prevents one e5. That would be my 
real recommendation like d4 or knight to f3 but since you're stuck here might as well target this pawn they will normally defend it and here the overwhelming majority of chess players plays e3 when after d5 they want to go bishop b5 and i don't think you have anything special here either but at least there's some trickery um while the trendy line is knight f6 bishop b5 and bishop to d6 where i don't know how, how they play they play knight e2 followed by castles then after a6 they take here and maybe one day they'll go f4 try to and lengthen is that a word lengthen this bishop's diagonal take it from there i don't think white is better but it's sort of playable like you go d3 knight d2 typically give up this bishop and then prepare f4 that's what i would recommend with the caveat that you made me go 1b3 one second okay second over Hmm. Website. Peter S. T. Oh, I think I might have, might have overlooked some questions here during my prepare work, but it's a martial question, so I might still be able to open it. Hi, Jan. Thanks for your great work. To open it, to answer it which I highly appreciate. I use your DVDs and your videos as the basis for my 1E5 recommender repertoire. Glad to hear that. In correspondence chess, up to now, I never lost a game starting with E4, E5. Yeah, it's a pretty solid move. As you, I really like 17 F5 in the 12 D4, 15 Rook E4, 17 Knight D2 line of the Marshal. After 17 F3, you recommend Bishop F5 instead of F5 is bad. Ah, S, F5 is bad. Yep. Did you analyze, perhaps in your work for Magnus, the idea to try to play f5 even in this line after starting with king h8 or even bishop h3? <coughs> Not in my work for Magnus, but actually a chess24 user made me aware of this move. King h8. And I checked it after he told me and I came to the conclusion that it is indeed a good move. So this f3 move is out of fashion. It looks like you've already come to the same conclusion, let's put it on the board. And yeah, I did analyze it and I thought it was fine for black to answer your question quickly. I'm not sure I'll get there actually. That's the problem with these martial positions. Even though you analyze them, it's very hard to make it through the first 17 moves. Um, rookie one, b5, bishop b3, castles, c3, d5, takes, 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 takes c6 d4 no one plays d4 anymore everybody goes d3 here but d4 bishop d6 rookie one we go here 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 rookie four g5 queen f1 queen h5 and yeah the question was f3 which at one point i thought was a clever move or directed against f5 which is fine after knight d2 here f5 is an interesting move um but yeah f3 king h8 is very strong as you pointed out and as was pointed out to me before intending all kinds of violence with f5 knight f4 clearing this g8 square for the rook and white struggles to survive here which can be confirmed by any powerful computer which i'm sure you have as a correspondence player so yeah i fully agree with that statement and congratulations on the find thanks for letting me know i was indeed already made aware of that Thanks, Peter St. Mareu is saying, Hi Jan, I have been struggling for a while against the French defense. I'm wondering, was it Peter St. that made me aware of King H8? Was that you even? I'm terrible with names. If it was, then thanks for that as well. But yeah, it was someone sent me some analysis on Chess24. Eh? I'm horrible remembering anything but thank you uh, thanks a lot whoever it was Mareu candidate master is saying hi Jan I've been struggling for a while against the French defense and I finally settled on the advanced the advanced variation I think it's called against queen b6 I settled the d I sacrificed the d4 pawn with bishop d3 after knight f3 I like the unbalanced positions that arise because black players are usually clueless about what to do clueless However, if black plays a more passive setup, something like knight c6, bishop d7, rook c8, I struggle to get an interesting position. 
any idea to put black to the test if he plays that setup? I'm sorry, I really don't. Um, no, I don't know what to recommend or what to play there. Like this advanced variation always struck me as a very strange choice, frankly, because you're giving black what he wants, like some very clear target and fluid development. But space means something, so I'm sure it makes sense. However, knight d2 or knight c3 still strike me as a more logical move. Um, but no, honestly, I really don't know anything. After bishop d7, what do they do? They normally start with bishop e2, right? Or with a3. However, bishop d3, you're happy with all these queen b6 lines and sacrificing the pawn. So you can do this and then you're unhappy about rook c8? Is that what you're saying? I'm not sure I can relate. In this position, rook c8 looks like a loss of time in lines like DC with dc5 followed by castles, right? Once again, the usual disclaimers. I'm not sure what I'm talking about here. I lack experience. I never play e4, blah, blah, blah. But this looks like a decent version for white because your rook on c8 feels a little misplaced and it's not so easy for white to develop. Like for black to develop, I'm sorry, like knight g7, you can, for example, go for stuff like this, intending knight knight to b5, castles, I'm guessing there's bishop h7 ideas, so, well, here's also b5, right? <laughs> so, dc5, if this is the position we were talking about, I'm just assuming it is, I don't think bishop d3 is a main line, but normally people don't play bishop d3, because of queen b6, but if I understood you correctly, you're happy sacrificing that pawn. So that would not be your concern, or because of cd followed by queen b6, I should say. Um, so yeah, my recommendation with a lot of disclaimers would be to take on c5 followed by castles. <laughs> Nova Druid is saying, Hello Jan, will you please make a black repertoire versus e4 series after you complete your repertoire versus d4 series? I doubt it. I've done that in the past and I've yeah also done an update as a chess 24 series for my past DVDs. So I don't think I will, but there's a lot of excellent e4, e5 stuff. Peter Svidler series, for example, on, what was it on? The Arkhangelsk is highly informative. Um, but no, it's it's nothing I have currently planned. However, I'll, I'll give it some thought. Thanks for the suggestion. But I don't like repeating myself. You might, you might be surprised to hear that if you've ever watched any show of mine. But in general, I try not to do the same thing over and over. Wallace Shawn is saying, Hi Jan, this year at the Tal Memorial, we saw a very interesting theoretical game between Boris Gelfand and Li Chao. Frankly, I missed that. I haven't been following all this Grunfeld action. Chao brought some intriguing preparation to the game and managed to win with black. What do you think of the position after d4, knight c6, c4, g6, knight c3, and so on and so forth? Let's put it on the board. The good old Grunfeld going very strong still. White players don't know what to do at the highest level. Everybody plays knight f3, g3 or 3f3 because everybody's stuck in the girl Grunfeld. As for the line in this game, once again, disclaimers, blah, 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 not a specialist. But I had a brief look and it does look like this rook d1, knight c2, rook b1, knight d4 is indeed a good idea. And Li Chao managed to... Yeah, get enough play for the pawn. I think Gelfand immediately sacrificed the exchange, but you don't have to do that. You could go back here. When black would still have to prove his compensation, but I'm pretty sure he would have. Knight d6, rook e8. Black is very active. Um, the alternative that black has to be ready for when he plays this line is instead of, bishop G, instead of rook d1, the move bishop g5. When Sometimes they sacrifice the queen here, but I like queens, so I've never been that sold on this queen sacrifice here. At the very least, it seemed to me like black has to fight for a draw. Some stuff like this. So you gotta be prepared for bishop g5 as well. I would be curious to see what they have in store here. So maybe stuff like this is playable, but 
Looked to me like white keeps some pressure. Anyway, impressive homework by Li Chao. But there is the move bishop g5, which I'm not sure what black is up to these days. V.I. Panos says, Happy New Year, Young. I have been rec confused recently with the white pieces in this line in the perch defense, Pierce defense. e4, d6, d4, knight f6, knight c3, c6, f4, d5. I played e5, knight g8, bishop d3, h5, and he had some good chances. Could you suggest me something in this variation? Thank you and well done for your great work in chess 24. Thank you. Frankly, V. I. Panos, if this is your opening worry, then I greatly envy you because the position you gave looks kind of totally winning for white after six moves. So I have no idea how to even get there. It was this, right? C6, F4, D5, E5, Knight G8, Bishop D3, H5. And this bothers you. Why? f5 white is kind of winning him. Um, e6 you take, and knight f3 castles, then you continue by checkmating him. So no reason to be so pessimistic about this. This is as good an opening outcome as you're ever gonna get with the white pieces. Especially after h5 f5, but even this position, this line just seems like, frankly, Kind of rubbish for black. So don't worry about it. Danger Mao. Says Danger Mao 5, Feed Master. Says Hi Jan, do you think the London system is here to stay in top level chess? Or will the Elite. I never know how to pronounce Elite. Probably Elite. Guys, exhausted soon. I don't know the answer to that question. It's certainly. It's not like people are playing all these lines because they think they're so fantastic. It is because they're tired in wherever, the Grunfeld, the Slav, the Queen's Gambits, the Nimzo Indians, and they're looking for fresh ground. And of course, the more it's played, the less fresh this ground becomes. So I think we'll have a lot more theory on the London soon. Then again, it is a logical enough developing move that I'm not sure it's going to disappear forever. But yeah, I would expect that trend train to move somewhere else. Don't know where though. I do believe that the Gioco Piano is here to stay. That was surprising. The London, I'm not so sure about. Breaker90 says, Hi Jan, I have a student that is 1400 feeder and she is mulling between the Queen's Gambit declined and the Slav as her black defense to 1d4. Which one should she choose and why? My honest answer is, it really doesn't matter, but I don't think that's what you want to hear. So I'll tell you, she should choose the Queen's Gambit declined, because the Slav, especially at this level, you would get a lot of exchange Slavs, and you don't want to get that, because you don't really develop that much as a player, playing all these symmetrical positions. Therefore, play the Queen's Gambit, play... Yeah, you can even play this move over d4, d5, c4, e6, knight c3, knight f6. You learn a lot more about structures after c d5, e d5, or after knight f3, bishop e7. So, by all means, play the queen's gambit declined, because it will make you a better player long term, and you will pick up more on structures that will be useful for you down the stretch in your chess career than by playing the Slav, especially if you're gonna get a lot of exchange Slavs. Where were we? Were we here? Yep. Go, go, go. 22 says, hello, Jan. Happy New Year and congratulations to become a daddy. Thank you for opening. I recently practiced G3 systems versus King's Indian, but which I like, but I get problem when opponent goes for Grunfeld system C6, D5. How to try to get advantage for white? You're not the only one with that question. Pretty much the whole world top has that problem and that's been one of the big ongoing discussions like d4 knight f6 c4 let's say c4 g6 guys are sick of the normal Grunfeld so we've seen a lot of knight f3 g3 but against the c6 d5 systems p 
people are fairly stuck. We've seen a fair amount of CD, CD, and these positions, I believe you gave a slightly different mover, so I should probably honor that. Um, what mover did you give? Was it with knight f3? One second. Yeah, knight f3, knight f6, let's say g3, g6, bishop g2, bishop g7, d4. Oh, well, we can say castle, castle, d4, d5. And yeah, people are stuck here. The line you gave this takes, takes knight e5, e6, knight c3, knight ft7. First of all, I think after f4, white could be a little better here. Secondly, there's also, if you want to be super solid, knight f3, knight f6, bishop f4, stuff like that. Where white has a nibble maybe and can continue a little bit. But there's other problems like knight e5, there's also knight g4, which I believe is considered to be a very solid move. So... I kind of understand that, yeah, it's tough to find anything here. And it's like that for everybody. Vladimir Kramnik recently has been experimenting with any move under the sun here. He's played moves like c3, he's played b3, knight bd2, you name it, bishop f4. And he's played it. And since he's Kramnik and he's amazingly well prepared and super strong, he's even gotten some pressure here once in a while. But objectively, it's very, very hard. And I would struggle, or I do struggle too. c4, c6, you can play queen b3. People have been experimenting with that. But after queen b6, I'm also not going to claim it's particularly inspiring. Similar things could be said about b3, bishop f5, or dc, followed by c5. No, it's very, very solid for black. And yeah, it looks like most guys are still willing to enter this battlefield via one move order or the other. But there's not a lot to be gained. If you want to enter this battlefield, it probably makes sense to start by playing d4, d5, c4, c6. And now you have some more options with knight e5 or with an early knight c3. Because, yeah, in the line you gave, I believe knight g4 was a good move. But I'm sorry, I'm as stuck as anybody else there. People are just moving from A to B, trying to get in a surprise. Fabi. I have to wrap this up soon. Let's do, let's do five more questions. I feel that's generous enough. I'm already more than two hours in. Fabi says, hello Jan, what do you think about the Karakan line? e4, c6, d4, d5, knight c3, d, e, knight e4, bishop f5, knight g3, bishop g6, h4, h6, knight e2, followed by knight f4, e, g, e6, knight f4, bishop h7. In an impressive Bundesliga game, white played bishop d3, sacrificed a piece for positional compensation, and won a nice game in Volokitin Henkin, Bundesliga 03-04. I'm aware of that game, but it's been a while. Um, however, more often 9 bishop c4 is played. Are these lines viable alternatives for white to challenge the Karakan? Or have the black players found reliable ways to equalize here? If so, how would you play with black against bishop d3 or bishop c4? Whichever you deem more dangerous. I don't think either of them is very dangerous. It's a surprise weapon, but nowadays our computers are so strong that they will spit out the answers to such things instantly. And that is pretty much the case here. I don't think they've ever reached any other status than surprise weapon status. But of course you can play such things, especially with white. The problem with bishop d3 is that the computer immediately gives a refutation. Queen d4, bishop e3, queen d6. Yeah, knight takes e6 was Volokitin's big idea. But my computer instantly says g6 here instead of knight f6 is played in the game. And says, I ain't worried about nothing. Castles, knight d7, rook h1, bishop e7. Looks terribly dangerous, but a piece is a piece. And apparently there's not much here for white. So you can't really do that. Or you can't really repeat that. Clearly it was a good idea to do it once. You can't really repeat that. And bishop c4, I know nothing about, but it looks like black is very solid, right? You get the pieces out. You can put the knight on d5 if you need it to. Else you castle. I don't really see the appeal, so it's certainly playable, but doesn't look all that life-threatening to me. But it was a very nice game by Volokiti. Not to take anything away from him. Joe and Spain. Says, hi Jan, live your show. What happened to the Gajewski Gambit? 
Yeah, this was popular like 10 years ago, right? Um, is this just a question of fashion or is there a real refutation? Maybe E, D, E4, takes, takes, bishop, E7, D3 line, thanks. I think the problem is this, I believe I kind of know. Your line might be a real refutation, but the upside for black is very limited in this other line. Let me put it on the board. Um, using the word upside a lot today. Um, D6, let's start with this, doesn't matter. And here D5. The problem is D4 is just torture enough for black to scare people away from this. After E, D, E5, what is better? So they normally try D, E4, knight takes E5, C5, but here even, or especially bishop E3, followed by knight D2, white is just seriously better. The E4 pawn is weak and black doesn't have any active play or fun compensation for it. So I believe this has pretty much ended the line. The line you gave might also be good for white, but at least there it looks like one could look for some tricks or compensation. But this d5, d4 pretty much finished the discussion. And therefore, I don't expect it to come back now. Kazan Better is saying, Hi Jan, what do you think of this line in the Queen's Gambit Decline Exchange Variation? Didn't we have this line earlier? I think we had this exact line. And I think, yeah. I gave my exact opinion that black should draw, but I wouldn't want to do it because you're slightly worse. And it's one of these 40-60 positions with zero upside. To use it one more time. So yeah, I wouldn't want to go there. You guys see the position? After knight g7, b4, a6, a4, bishop f5, b5, takes, 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 takes. All that stuff. <clears throat> I believe white is a little better. But... It's not terrible. Um, but yeah, play the Nimzo Indian. Watch my new video series. That is my honest advice because I was, I spent a lot of time lo looking for a Queen's Gambit declined exchange variation line I liked. I couldn't find any. Therefore, I converted to the Nimzo. Crispy Ambulance. Two more? I can't count. Let's say three more to give you guys the benefit of the doubt. Or uh, the benefit of me not being able to count. Crispy Ambulance says, Jan, many thanks for all your 2016 work and hope you master the art of clicking ASAP. Referring to a Twitter video, I'm guessing. As the Italian is so popular, why do top GMs always avoid the knight g5 mainline of the two knights, usually wimp out with d3 or some other slow system? Is there a killer defense that isn't so well known as all the lines see to be as advantageous for white as any other system, or even more to my club player eyes. We'll have to know the GM consensus on it. Thanks, Jan, and say happy Hockmanay, whatever that means, to Radio Jan from me. I'm not sure there's a consensus established. I'll bring it up at the next GM meeting. But I believe it's true. First of all, 90% of super gems play bishop c5 here, not knight f6. Um, and after knight f6, a lot of the time we will see the move d3. I believe it's mainly for practical reasons. If black plays knight f6, he's clearly signaling, I'm not afraid of knight g5, and I've prepared something here. So white is saying, you know what, I don't care, I'll play d3, this is what I looked at anyway, your best move is bishop c5, why would I waste my time on knight g5? I'm anything if not pragmatic, and I'm not scared of bishop e7 in this position, why would you be? just feels like an inferior version of the main lines. Therefore, why waste time looking at knight g5 if I can just blitz out d3? And your best move is to transpose to bishop c5 with bishop c5. So I believe it's mainly a practical thing. I once spent a bit of time in this territory and I had the feeling that white is probably better here, but it's quite dangerous for both sides. So that's still where I stand, even though I haven't like spent a lot of time on it recently so i'm not sure but that is my hunch that most guys say why bother i have better things to do than studying knight g5 for the one game i might maybe get where black doesn't play bishop c5 but knight f6 and i don't care about stopping you from going bishop e7 therefore i'll 
use all my resources to study this position, which I can get via both move orders. I believe that's just the explanation why they normally wimp out, as you call it, with 4d3. Königsmörder says, some days ago I got terribly crushed in the following Karo can line. e4, 1e5, c6, d4, d5. Well, I got it. 3e5, bishop f5, h4. Here I only know the moves h6 and h5, but my opponent played queen b6. Do you know something about this move and how white should continue? I don't know much about this move, but I've seen some games. I believe Morozevich had a game as white, right? Um, um, I believe white should continue. Having said h4, you might as well say a4 as well. Just, just say as well twice in one sentence. Yeah, I think you should play a4 here. Planning to harass this queen with a5. If black plays a5, he can never go c5 anymore because he's weakened the b5 square very badly. Therefore, they normally... And he still can't play e6. is also important because of g4. Trapping the bishop. Something like h6. And now you just grab as much space as you can. g4, bishop d7, a5, c4, e6, c5. I believe this is Morozevich's game. And why was seriously better and went on to win. So... I do think that a4, as funny as it may look, is in the spirit of this variation, just grabbing space everywhere, trying to push this queen back. Hope that will help you. There's also c5, by the way, before you get run into a nasty surprise next time. Also look at the move c5 while you're at it. Lucian's Parachute is saying, Happy New Year, Jan. Happy New Year to you, Mr. Lucian's Parachute. In his video repertoire series on the Spanish, Niklas gives 6 d5 and 10 queen d3 against the Berlin, with the idea 10 bishop e7, queen g3. I admit it doesn't look like much, and Jen of course gives 0, 0, 0. Still, do you have an explanation for the fact that this has almost never been tried? Chess24 database finds 23 games in total, while e.g. the also not extremely thrilling Rookie 1 has 166 in 2016 alone. Are white players too afraid they could become worse because of black's bishop pair? Thanks. I certainly would be. Yeah, I must admit I haven't spent much time on this. I'm sure Niklas has checked this further. But just from looking at the position you put on the board there, it looks a little dangerous, no? It's like this. Also, I believe on the way here, there's alternatives. Right after a4, there's d6. And after knight d4, knight takes d4, there's also d5 immediately. Both of which would probably avoid this position and are also fine or considered fine for black. But I haven't checked Nicholas' video series, so I'd be curious what he has to say there. Anyway, the line you gave or he gave is this, d5, and now queen d3? Yeah, I don't know. I like my bishops, so I probably... Yeah, be happy with the move like c6 here, but I've really never spent any time studying this. Bishop e7, queen g3 makes sense to me. But if I go c6, what's the point? Now queen g3, there's probably h5 something, playing to harass it. Engine says knight c3, then g6. I don't know, I've never looked at this in detail. I'm sure white has some plans here. But yeah, it does look like black should be okay to me. But once again, you're probably better off asking Niklas there. It's a fairly thankless task to come up with anything against the Berlin. And he gave probably a good surprise line. I've never checked as much. But yeah, I'm a sucker for the two bishops. So this position does look decent to me. All right, last question. Bye, Mr. R. WC94. He is saying, Hi Jan, what are your thoughts on the current state of theory in the Zamish King's Indian where white avoids playing an early knight bc3 when playing 3f3? Anna uses this idea in his match against Gelfand after 3c5 d5 has been included. However, the knight e2 c3 maneuver doesn't seem to have caught on all that much. Do you see any particular reasons for this? Not 100% sure I'm following, but I think I am. So I'll answer the question the way I understood it. You're saying after 3f3 here, 
if black plays bishop g7, e4, let's say d6, knight e2 castles, and now why not play knight e c3? Is that is that the question? I'm not sure. I've seen some games here, but you're right, it's not that popular. To my mind, the drawback with this would be that we've left d4 a little underprotected. So knight c6 looks very logical. Tending e5 followed by knight to d4. And yeah. Black white can't allow that, so he would have to go d5. But after knight e5, having lost all this time bringing the knight here, black probably has enough play after bishop e2, e6. There were some games, right? Isn't this some Nakamura Swedler game? But I have, a, I have a hunch why this in this move order where c5, d5 has not been included. This plan is not very popular for that reason. I'm hoping that answered your question. Still, most top guys play d5 against f3, or they used to play knight c6, but now it is mainly d5. So it probably means they're quite comfortable with the regular samish from the white side of the board. I'll go one more. <clears throat> I should stop teasing, but this is the last one because I gotta get going. Overtime here. <clears throat> Prusti, Prustiskin, Prustiskin, saying, "Hi Jan, I've spent some time with your Nimzo series, and I'm wondering about some sidelines in the Karpov variation, specifically Queen e2, ten Queen e2, Bishop b7, Rook d1, Queen c8, Knight b7, Bishop g5, Bishop c3, transposes." Bishop g5 and either bishop f3 or bishop c3. Thoughts on how black should play? Once again, I'm haunted by my goldfishy memory because I know I looked at this, but I'm not sure what I gave in the video series. So let's put it on the board and try to figure it out. Mm. Here, 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 let's say here, here, here. Takes, 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 b6, and now not bishop g5, the main move, but we start with queen e2, bishop b7, rook to d1. Here, the main line used to be, or maybe still is knight bd7, but then why does this d5 break through, which I want to avoid. So I honestly can't remember what I gave in the series. I know queen c8 is a move, which looks very funny, but it's introducing this idea of bishop takes f3, and maybe I gave it, I'm not sure, it is certainly a playable move. When the computer mainline was something like bishop g5, we take here, takes, we take here as well, bc, knight bd7, and it's a weird position where white has the two bishops, which is nice, but white also has a fairly rotten structure with lots of potential targets. Computer gives 0-0. Zero, zero. My hunch is I'd probably slightly prefer white here, and I hope I said something similar in the video series but I honestly can't remember. Then, yeah, there's also the option, which is be, might be what I have given, to take here and then go queen to c7. If the bishop moves, I think we can get away with capturing that pawn. Or what Vladimir Kramnik played recently against Aktestein, the move h6. This might actually be strongest of all, just stopping white from going bishop to g5 and asking him, what's your next move if knight e5 I'll go knight c6 and equalize without any particular trouble. Usually we can trust Kramnik blindly. Apologies if I did not cover that line in the series. I honestly can't remember. I do know that I've seen it and that's it. There's a sideline, but hopefully this makes up for it. So h6 played by Kramnik looked like a very good shortcut. And this move queen to c8, you have to kind of be comfortable with the position after grabbing all these things. I have a feeling white is a bit better here, but black certainly has counter chances against the weakened white king. So play the lines, both of those. I hope that helped. And having said all that, I have to wrap it up here. Thank you guys so much for watching the show. I gotta get going, but since I feel bad about not answering all your questions, I'll be back in the office tomorrow and I'll record the answers for Ellie. I should make a cutoff because else I'll be stuck here. For the first 100 questions, I'm not sure. The ones that are open in my browser, it's 104 currently. This is the last one I'm gonna answer. So I'll record a follow-up of this tomorrow morning last answer. 
question by Nicholas Cook. Please don't post any new ones. I won't answer those, but I feel bad that I didn't get to answer everybody. So I'll do that tomorrow morning and opening clinic 14A. So thank you everybody for watching this one. I hope we learned something. I'm sorry for my usual condescending tone for not having anything new to say and all that. That, no, I'm not that sorry. Gotta say what you believe. And thanks for watching. See you soon, probably even tomorrow when I'm recording the follow-up part to this. Don't know what time yet. We'll figure it out. See you then. Bye.